Welcome. If this is your first time, I'm Kyle. I am one half of the Wandering Shores. And how would you like a camp spot just like this overlooking the National Forest just outside Steamboat Springs? Well, thanks for checking in today. I'm going to show you what's available. Do you enjoy free camping and boondocking across the United States? Well, we've got a lot more for you. If you haven't already checked out thewanderingshores.com and we have an interactive Google map there where you can see all of the spots we've done campsite reviews of as well as things to do in the area. So check us out. So for those of you who have been with us before on our campsite reviews, this one's going to be slightly different in part because it's such a massive wide open area with all of the boondocking locations. So what I did the other day is I took a drive through all of the locations so that I can show you the roads going in and out. And then I'm going to take you over to Google Maps and kind of give you an overall walkthrough along with inserting some of the pictures and videos that I took along the way. So make sure you stay till after the video as well. I'm gonna talk about some of the resources that are available in the area. There's uh, where can you dump your trash? Where can you get potable water? Um, both before you come to, into the boondocking area and even while you're here. Um, I'm going to show you a few of the overviews of the area and show you some of the best sites. And I'm also going to show you, which you'll find out, one of the sites to avoid, which is the one we started at. And I'll tell you why near the end. All right, everyone. Now you can see I have got us pulled up on Google Maps and I just kind of wanted to go through some of the available boondocking here. So for a point of reference, Steamboat Springs is right here. So we're going to be talking about everything east of the park or of the city. Um, the first location we're going to look at is right here. It's called e Rabbit Ears West Dispersed Camping. Now I'm going to tell you right now that this is a pretty rough road coming in. It's right off Interstate 40 and I'm not exactly sure what this is right here. They've like put a big asphalt parking lot. I'm not sure if you're allowed to camp on that or not. There's a one small spot right here. And then as you go down the road, there's a really nice spot here, but it's awfully close to I-45. Um, but then the other thing is this road is all tore up. So, you know, if you're going to drag a trailer in there, I've seen a few trailers in there, but I highly suggest you maybe park right here and go scout it if you're going to go. Um, we never drove this far up, but you can see that there are some boondocking spots, but most of these are going to be for smaller rigs. And that location is probably about 20 minutes away from, you know, Steamboat Springs proper. Now let me go back to the this view. I'm going to bring you over here because this is actually where we started our camping at. Um, right here is Walton Peak Dispersed Camping. That's what it's called on Campendium. And this long road is probably about five miles long. And as you can see, there are a ton of spots that I've pinned along the way. I'm going to pull this up and show you a few of those. When you so as you pull in off the street, you're going to see this first flat area. It's really close to the interstate, but it is a viable option for an overnight stay. Then you kind of, our friend was camping with us and he took his car in to get the oil changed and they found six live mice in his engine bay and he had only been in that spot with us for three days. So we very quickly moved. I'll show you later where we moved to. Um, as you go a little bit further down this road and I'm showing hopefully some drive in of this road so you have an idea. It's a pretty nice road until you get pretty far out. This spot is a nice spot for a smaller rig. Um, this is kind of an incline right here so you have to be careful um, but it is a nice spot. There's a, a, like a, almost like a little lollipop spot right there. Then you're going to come to this intersection. Well, let me zoom in. There was somebody camped right here at one point, but there are some spots, as you can see, right there and then down here at the end off the offshoot of 3021B and A, I think is the other name. And then there's a couple spots out here as well. But this is a pretty rough road, so you definitely want to kind of park here and go scout to see because there, if there's somebody back there, you're not going to have an easy time turning around. As you go a little bit deeper down, there's a really nice spot right here. And again, I'm going to pin most of these spots in the video description. So if you want to go to a specific one, you'll find it an easy way. Now, um, this whole road, as I'm showing you, is decent shape until you get up to about right here where it gets pretty rough. However, 
to to somebody's credit, there was a guy with a small class C slot size uh, bus conversion right here. Um, but there is a couple spots here. The intro was filmed in this location. So it gives you a point of reference where that was. And then you can come up around. This is a cell tower right here. So if you're looking for cell service, that might be a good spot. Or if you want to avoid the radiation from the cell tower, you may not want to be up here. But there's a spot right there and then right there at the end as well. Now, let me go back here. Campendium Rabbit Ears East. Now, before I get to taking you down that road, I'm gonna take you over here to this. This is actually a snow park parking lot. So you can camp here in this big wide open. It's, a, it's basically crushed gravel or asphalt. It's fairly flat. You could park, you know, have your front door facing the woods and get some privacy. Um, there were a couple campers there, so that is an option. You cannot park over in this campground or in this parking lot, I do not believe, but you can park overnight in that spot. So over at Rabbit Ears East, when you first pull in, there's going to be kind of information placard right here. There are several spots, as you can see on this overview. Um, I've seen as many as five or six rigs parked there. Now, as you go a little bit further in, you're going to see there's a spot right here. Now, this is a dead end road, so people have been camping right here. Um, it's not that great of a spot, um, but there is a small campfire ring there and you can pretty much just park right in the road because nobody else is going to go back here because that's not even a camp spot. Then over here, it's hard to tell, but this is actually a lake, a small lake, and there is camping right here. And then though it doesn't show that, there's actually now a road that goes along here and there's a really beautiful campsite right here and right there as well. So that's an option when you first come in. This road is in really good shape. I think it's called Colorado County Road or State Road 19, but it is gravel, um, but it's in pretty good shape the entire way. It goes for like 30 miles. So we drove back. There's a campsite right here as you come in. Now, I've got a yellow star here. One thing I wanna mention about this, this for some reason is listed as a campsite on Campendium and there is a small fire ring there, but it's actually a trailhead. I would highly encourage you not to park there. Um, you know, leave the space for the hikers. There's a very nice trail right here. I would suggest not parking or trying to camp in that spot. There are plenty of other uh, options along the way. Then as you get a little bit further, you're gonna see an offshoot right here. There's a giant tent today. There's a giant tent right there. And then there's a camping spot right there. And we chose to camp a little bit further up. This is a nice U shape uh, in and out. We were originally gonna be there, but we decided to move one step a little bit further down the road. So point of reference, this location is where we're currently camped. And I'm showing it to you here um, with a uh, video that I had originally filmed when we came up here to scout. This spot here is five miles in from the interstate. So just so you know that that's how far it is in um, if you have a point of reference there. Um, as you go a little bit further out along this road, there are a ton of other smaller campsites. And then even once you get further out, there are some larger ones like this one right here. So there is a lot of, a lot of options along that road if you choose to come out 19. Couple things I wanna mention in the area as well before we wrap this up. Right here, there is a large parking lot that uh, Rabbit Ear Summit Pass. There's a large parking lot right there and it does have an outhouse, or I mean a pit toilet, which is what that is right there, an information placard. We actually parked there and went and scouted to find our original spot. So that is a great place to kind of park or down at the uh, snow park right here you can park as well if you want to go scout and see what's available and then maybe leave something to reserve your spot so um, these spots here it's about from our campsite to the road it's about a 15 minute drive and then it's about a 30 minute drive into steamboat springs so it's from our camp spot which is right here it's about a 35 minute drive into steamboat springs where you can find everything now i'm going to take you over here to steamboat springs and one thing I want to talk about is water. Right here is Whistler Park. 
and in Whistler Park, if you come in this road right here, there is a bathroom right there, and there is a spigot where you can fill up a bucket or connect a hose to it if you've got a rig small enough to go through there. Obviously, you're going to want to go, and it's not a very busy time because this is a very small parking lot, but you can come in this direction and go out that direction, but there is a water spigot there. Over at the fairgrounds, and let me take you over to that, there is... Let me find the fairgrounds first. There, somewhere over here, there is a dumpster at the fairgrounds. Um, I'm having a hard time finding it right now for you guys, but oh, there it is. Um, so there is a dumpster right here at the professional rodeo and fairgrounds. Um, so that is an option if you want to throw out some garbage. There's a ton of mountain bikes here, mountain biking trails right here, along with across the street, there is a ski lift um, serviced mountain bike trail if you're coming during the summer. Um, but hopefully you, hopefully you enjoyed this campsite review. If you have any questions, oh, before you go, let me tell you, um, internet, you get some Verizon up here on 19 where we're at, but not very strong. So be advised of that. Starlink's been working great. We didn't get any T-Mobile over here on 302, which is Walton Peak. And we got very minimal uh, Verizon over in this spot. So if you're looking for cell service and you don't have Starlink, you're probably going to want to try to stay right along this area because you'll at least get some with the Verizon. So hopefully this was helpful for, to, helpful for you. Don't forget to check out our interactive map as we've got a ton of other campsite reviews and things to do in the area around the nation.